it's sprint zone party time again and let's get the show on the road 614 and we have a lively group with a couple of newcomers notably eric up there in the bright pink who has an exceptionally well fitting kit and i may make note about that or later got her in front of me we got scott we got kent and it's time to rock and roll we're heading into the sprint zone start up county road five and the start is going to begin when we make the right hand turn as usual everyone is well ordered the temperatures are good and we've got a slight tailwind checking out the group in front of us we're looking at hernan who looks like he has slimmed down a bit from last year and he is becoming a strong man and is going to make himself a gc contender of note one of these days regardless we're slowing down everyone is following proper etiquette not taking up too much road which i like to see interesting the new stoplights up there ah and behind we have legend matthew michaels and of course ian followed by a few others we got rob in the back and michael there's Carlos, one of my teammates, and then we've got Matthew, ex-teammate. Notice the contrasting old-school kits. And it's party time. Now, I had made a speech earlier about not starting the sprint until later on because those were getting some advantage in the corners. And this kind of a thing could spiral out of hand. With seasoned skilled racers, not a problem. With everyone here who don't, doesn't actually like practice those sorts of skills, it could be sketchy, and once it gets strung out, it's game over. Regardless, newcomer Eric takes to the front, trying to keep people honest. And I guess this is cool. Like For newcomers to the group, I would normally follow, but since I did make the sprint zone speech about you can do whatever you want, you can do whatever you want. Matthew Michaels coming to the front, aka Beast. I think I'm going to give him that call sign. I've been inspired by Top Gun. Keeping young Eric in check. Ian holding some weight up there. Hernan looking strong. Making certain not to lose the posse that is containing the real GC guy. Matthew Michaels. Got Scott coming up. And there seems to be a little bit of lethargy in the group behind. When you see Beast go, you need to be on it. Yet there's no room for gaps to be opened up. That being said, since the speech was made about holding it down, I can see maybe where there wasn't gonna be a sense of urgency. Looking at the wattage numbers I was putting out, you know, upper 100s, low 200s, there's a reason that these people should have been up there. And of course they eventually do close the gap, bleeding off energy in the process. So Mike Weida holding his own one of the guys who's usually there in GC contention, hanging on as a wheel sucker in the back, feeling good and holding his own with Matthew up at the front. Now, I personally would not have done that. I would have let Matthew take the pull and sat on his wheel, let him set the tempo. But if you want to go mano a mano with the big man, more power to you. Not my cup of tea. Don't have the power to do it. So heading into the, the corner the right-hander or left-hander that is of consequence because we don't want to have any crashes. Everyone is keeping the, the formation and keeping it slow up until that point. Ian looking strong there, and we focus on him, and everyone's in tow. So normally at this point, we have broken up and everyone might not be there. This will be a chance for those wannabes, for those folks who have stated, oh, I would have been there if it wasn't for those S corners. This is the time for you to show your stuff because it's gonna be all together until that point. Mike Weida actually out there way too long at the front holding his tempo with the big man. This is not gonna be good for him because it's gonna take him a while to recover when it is go time. Basically, the last corner is over and the wattage begins to creep up a little bit. Everyone in tow. Carlos, new teammate this year, sporting the new old school kit, hanging in there and looking good. Everyone looking to, to exercise patience as they know that it would be futile to go 
with strong men such as Matthew up at the front. Now the game begins to, to hotten up a little bit. Matthew looks around to see if people are around and Ian is on his wheel. There's a slight wind coming off of our right shoulder so Mike's still bleeding off energy out there and is at this point he is no longer able to hold the tempo and will be wished adios. Thank you for your service. I slot in in slot four. I'm feeling okay today. Had a hard ride the day before or so and so I'm just happy not to do a lot of work here but just to sit in and film what's going on. Turn in looking strong this time. Patience has paid off and he's got his shot now. Looking behind, we've got Michael, we've got Carlos. I think Carlos should have been a little higher, a little closer. You can see starting a little bit of a gap starting to open up. But And there's Ian who popped and was unable to hold his own. Byron, AKA Superman. Yeah, I know, I know. That's DC character and I know Beast is Marvel but I'm gonna mix these call signs because that's what I wanna do. So Byron comes to the front, strutting his stuff, super smooth cadence on the gravel bike, and Matthew is quick to take the wheel. Hernan has studied hard over the week, and he is in perfect position to be able to hang on to this one. This is excellent. I'm in fourth, and there's plenty of draft behind all of these big men, and I am enjoying it. Not certain what's happening behind me at this point, but I don't really care because I am there. Notice the slight echelon, which shows how, how much and what the vector of the wind was. And it was a pretty stiff wind, if I recall, probably 15 mile per hour, which is why the speeds were a little slow. Carlos hanging in there nicely. So we've got three old school people in this one. And it looks like we have quite the selection with lots of people that are able to contend here. Justin moving up on the outside and Hernan moves back a little bit. Looks like he's gonna give Justin the wheel. I believe at this point I was suggesting that Hernan stay on that wheel up there because you lose that, it's game over. And you can see behind, we have this little bit of a grade. It doesn't look like much, but you can see my wad is popping up 300, 360, and that is causing my teammate Carlos to be ejected. Next time, Carlos, we will talk about this later. Strong man, Eric, and look how nice his kit fits. That's one of the better fitting kits in the Peloton. That is tight. And even though people don't realize it, it's wattage savings. I know people don't like to hear me talk about clothing and wattage and such things like that, but it is true. Echelon stretching yellow to white or white to yellow. This is something that gets a lot of people upset. Hey, there's no one back there. There's no cars. So you guys should keep your, and this is inappropriate, your panties not in a bunch. And I'm going to digress a little bit about some of these people with this car centric mentality. They seem to have the idea that cars have a higher priority than bikes and that bikes don't deserve to have their fun on the road. Same people out there and their cars are speeding. You know, pick the rules you want to obey or pick your poison, but don't get all over people that want to ride their bikes and have a little bit of fun in the road. So I digress and that's over. Back to the front, Matthew holding strong it looks like it is Carl on his wheel. Eric has moved up and is going to be, looks like, looking for a sprint contention as soon as we reach the top of the second climb there. Justin looking strong, like just pulling hard up there. Much, much different than last week when he was on the gravel bike, but he was still strong. Looking behind, look at the frontal profile of Byron. He makes himself extremely small and it is extremely aerodynamic. Those bent elbows getting down low, that is much more aerodynamic even than being in the drops. And a smart rider such as himself takes that into consideration when he picks his position. So at this point, uh, I believe Superman was giving me some shelter. At this point, I didn't really need it because the way the wind was and with those many people up, there was plenty of shelter to be had even in the spot that I was in but I am always happy to let more people be in front of me. 
You can see in contrast, look at Justin's uh, jersey behind his neck. Look at that flapping right there. There's wattage, lots of wattage. I would suggest talking to Eric's tailor and perhaps finding out where he gets his stuff or get a real kit that is not club cut. Well, pretty much everyone on this ride should be wearing, wearing race cut stuff. Yeah, look at Beast there, look at his kit. Nice and tight with a special aerodynamic ribbing actually designed by one of uh, my teammates on Old School. So now I take to the front. I figure I hadn't done anything all day and I should at least do a little bit of service here and keep everybody honest as long as well as myself. I was actually going to be happy to pull all the way to the end here, but Byron looks like he's going to do me a favor whilst I'm doing almost 300 watts when he comes by. He's very nice, wants to make certain everyone is on his wheel, and I oblige by jumping on it. Super smooth roads, and I love this shot. Nice, nice, nice pace line as I slide back. Beast is coming hard for Byron, wanting to keep himself honest, doesn't want to be left back there in case he gets surprised. Eric looking strong, Justin looking strong, Carl looking good. Hernan, I believe the first time actually making the full GC pull up to the line. Well done. And it looks like it's going to be a drag race to the finish here. At this point, you can see my heart rate in the 160s. You know, that's pretty much about my limit of comfortableness. And I didn't want to go any harder, plus my legs are a little bit tired, so I'm not going to really contest this one, especially given the strong winds. Hernan looking good. Scott looking good back there. If I might point out, I believe the only two men in GC contention that didn't see any of the front, but it doesn't really matter. And here we go. It's sprint time. And Matthew goes, and there goes Byron. And it is exciting here. Big cadence versus small cadence. Big block versus medium block. And Byron, it looks like, kind of sits up, toying with everybody. Sitting there and making certain that he is there. There's the fist bump with Matthew. It looks like, I don't know who won. I'm going to say it was a gift maybe from Byron because he could have easily taken it. But a good time was had by all. Good to see everybody who was in that final selection making it to the end. Well done, folks. Well done. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that one, especially considering that I was a little bit tired. That was good. Matthew sagging back there after a well-earned rest. I'm loving the new pavement here. I'm loving this segment. And now it is time to regroup and recover. And there we go. A good look at some of the GC men as they make the final turn. And I must say, a good time was had by all. Well done, gentlemen. Well done. Well done. Once again, a nice, safe, clean effort by everyone. Until next time, peace out, guys, and we will see you at the next Sprint Zone.